um, cut the plastic. Uh, I met this guy in Denver. He's out there on the streets, like, you know, uh, protesting and supporting the homeless in uh, so many ways. And I think that uh, I, I think that money going to him will only make the world a better place. Like, I mean, he was hiring homeless people to print our shirts. And so, like, this is the kind of uh, grassroots. Like, I feel like he idealizes the I, the, the giveth, uh, you know, project of just, like, being a dude trying to make the world a better place with every breath he has. Great. Um, anything else, Griff? No, other than um, get coin grants. Uh, we really should put money in to get coin grants. Vote for okay. coin grants. Great. Yeah, we heard that. Um, I'm going to give two minutes for questions. So if anyone wants to speak up and ask Griff any questions about the projects you just talked about, go ahead now. Any questions at all? I don't know if you're talking for us, but we cannot hear you. I don't have a question. I was oh, just going to say I was happy to learn about the mutual aid one and see that that's in Denver where my sister lives. I think they're doing really rad stuff. Thanks for sharing. Cool. Nice. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, hi. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not sharing my video right now, but uh, I'm, uh, I think I have a beginner's question, and I don't think it's for this call, but uh, still, I guess I just wanted to say hi. So. Uh, okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> hi, Chris. Um, well, uh, I don't think there's any more questions for Griff. Um, does anyone else want to go on the list here? Thank you, Griff, by the way. That was great. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I have a I'd question. I'd love to go. Oh, okay. Go uh, ahead, Lauren. Yeah. Um, so for, I mean, Gitcoin grants, like, didn't Rainbow Rolls donate, like, 30% of their profits to Gitcoin grants as well? I mean, I think it's nice for us to, like, also go... Like, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to give some of the ETH that we raised to get going grants, but I feel like Gitcoin grants was already kind of covered with rainbow rules. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, that was also kind of what I was feeling whenever I was going through, because I had, I had, I had um, thought about putting Gitcoin grants down, but then I was like, oh yeah, another third, like rainbow rules already gave just as much to Gitcoin as they did to us. So yeah, I felt like kind of similar as you, Lauren. I would love to see Gitcoin grants um, be like like anyone who's donating to Gitcoin grants should donate on Giveth, right? Because then they get givebacks on top of it instead of sending it directly to the matching pool. So this idea of them being a Lego, you know, of, of us being a Lego on top of them uh, is really attractive to me. And so, yes, even though the Rainbow Rolls gave some money to Gitcoin, um, and equal amounts to Gitcoin as they did us. Like it says rainbow rolls on the sponsorship and it says rainbow rolls everywhere. I would love for it to say giveth on the, on the match as a matching pool contributor for yeah. next round. I think it's valuable to strengthen partnership. And I think, you know, Gitcoin didn't have the grants matching pool project on giveth at the time that they were donating the funds to. So I think that that would help in the future, but yeah. Okay, cool. I okay. think it's a good idea to donate to Gitcoin too, but. Great. That was a really good question. Thank you. And so, um, past the two minute mark, I want to pass it on. Um, does anyone else feel like taking on, uh, their selections? Yeah, I can go. Um, Great. Um, okay. So, I mean, I, I was just, I, I didn't go through all the projects. I just picked a few that I like, and, and maybe the one that I want to highlight is the Lyme disease project. Cause well, I was trying to think of projects that aren't verified, like kind of slightly favor projects that aren't verified over projects that are verified, because it's like this guy, this Lyme disease on hard mode guy, he really loves us. He's always retweeting Giveth. He's always like, anytime anyone donates to him, he's like, oh my God, I can't believe someone just donated to me. The crypto world is so great. Giveth is helping so much. And I think he's just like, is really genuine. He has Lyme disease and like his project is basically like to help cover some medical expenses. And like we would never verify a project like this because it's just for like his personal gain. But I think it is like a nice opportunity to kind of like help someone who um, is like is really loves us. And um, that's why I put it on there. Um, and then I put also 
EVM CRISPR, now they're verified, but at the time I put them there, they weren't verified. And I mean, EVM CRISPR is really cool. Sam was sitting here in the house and like, and we use EVM CRISPR all, all the time, like to make things work in Aragon and it's used in the garden. And I just, I think it's a cool project. We're already funding it with the, with the gift garden. So I think that's something to consider. Maybe, maybe like we put less of it into EVM CRISPR, but the reason that I put it on there is because it was unverified. It's somebody that I know who's doing good work. And um, it's something that we also actively use as giveth. And I wanted to include something techie in my, in my three um, suggestions. So I picked something like personal and, and health. I picked something techie. And then the last one I picked was the marriage on for a plastic free world. I think I have it open too. Yeah, and I, I th this project is is verified. So, so um, Ashley or Forrest had gone through it and like and, and checked to see that they're actually doing good work. And I mean, I just feel like plastic in the oceans is a huge problem, and I really like am a big proponent of like waste management. And they are like offering educational programs, recycling workshops, and then they're trying to create like sustainable surf surf equipment with recycled and recyclable plastic. So I think it's really nice to like. I mean, most of our plastic, you're like, oh, I'm recycling plastic, but then it gets put in like a big ship and then they send it to Asia and then like half of it goes in the ocean and half of it just like ends up on beaches. And I think that like making surfing equipment out of recycled plastics is kind of like taking the problem that's in the ocean and making it to stuff that we can play with in the ocean. It's kind of cool and meta. And um, I like uh, I like waste management. That's why I put that project on there. And it's a verified project. So I put and one that would never get verified, one that eventually got verified, one that got verified, something techie, something health, and something environmental. That's all. Great, thank you. Um, and so we'll leave just a few minutes for questions, if anyone has for Lauren. <coughs> mm, I was looking at Merjan for the community spotlight, and I had a hard time finding more information and I can see that the project was made in May last year, so that was shortly after launch. And they haven't put any updates. So like I don't have any I don't have any websites here, like on their project description, and I don't have any updates. I wonder, Ashley or Forrest, did did you verify this project and do you know or do you have any explanation as to like why it was verified or they they have a website. Um, it's merjan.de. Yeah, I know they have a website. I verified this like a while back. It was one of the earlier projects that got verified. Um, that's the thing about some, you know, in the application, they provide so much more information for us. Whereas like sometimes their project description doesn't have all the same uh, information that the application does. But yeah, you can see like, I mean, their website's pretty... Their website, nice, but I don't... their website even links to giveth. Mm hmm. Oh, that's really Oh, that's cool. awesome. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Oh, yeah, here it is giveth. Yeah. That's well, good. It's a shame it that. wasn't in their project description, but sure, I'm glad yeah. to know it exists. We should, uh, I mean, you know how we're going to like make it so the projects need to update every few months. I I'm excited for them to get an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Well, moving on, any questions about uh, this project or other projects that Lauren nominated? EVM CRISPR, Lyme disease. Okay. Cool. Um, would anyone else like to go next? Forrest or Ashley? Like that was Forrest? Yeah. OK, go for it. Hey. So all the projects that I listed are based here in Costa Rica. Um, first, I want to share about uh, Free the Food. This is an initiative by um, my friends Ara and Devin, as well as several, like, it's a whole crew that's implementing this. And um, basically what they're doing is on all of the, along the public roads in the Diamante Valley and um, the easements, um, so like the, the very edges of the road, they're planting fruit trees and like highly nutritious edible plants so that food is accessible to the public. And there are a lot of um, like low, 
there are a lot of folks that are um, locals that especially during COVID got seriously hit by lack of tourism and they don't always have a means to feed their family. So this initiative is, yeah, helping people to be able to meet their basic needs without having to pay for it and just like free the food, like creating freedom through um, regenerative agriculture. So I think that's super beautiful. And um, I know them personally, and I know they've been doing good work and, and putting some sweat, sweat equity into, yeah, bringing this to the valley. And I believe the idea is ultimately to extend it like beyond our immediate region um, once they've like covered the roads here. Um, yeah. So that's Free the Food. Um, the next one is We the Medicine. So this is an initiative by my friend David, and basically he's trained in the havening technique, which is um, similar to tapping, and it is a form of trauma release. Um, and so, yeah, he it's like really beautiful technique that he's learned. Um, it's super simple, and it allows us to go back to different moments of our life where we've experienced trauma. Um, and actually like release the trauma from our physical body where it is stored. Um, and so what David has been doing um, for like the last year and a half is traveling around and teaching this to children and parents and just like community members for free. Um, and he's also started doing some retreats that are just donation based. So um, yeah, it's really beautiful. I think like one of the greatest ways that we can heal the world is by healing ourselves and raising our consciousness. And so this is like one such initiative. Um, and I think specifically he's like seeking funding for a vehicle so that he can more easily travel around and, and teach this to people. And he would like to train additional facilitators in the happening techniques so that other people can also Spread it. He's the only one in Costa Rica doing this. Um, and recently, like a few months ago, the happening technique like got some global notoriety. Uh, like it, it's, I think, it started with some guys at Stanford. It's like a scientifically proven effective method, and it's being like recognized as such around the world. But he's the only one doing it in Costa Rica right now. Um, so that's we the medicine. Um, and then the other project that I put is Teva Natural Birth Sanctuary. This is actually a project that myself and Elon and a few of our friends that are living at the farm um, have been working on. And uh, for sure, after uh, our pregnancy and natural home birth journey, we've become extremely passionate about, um, about conscious pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. And we learned so, so much. And what we've realized is that the moment of birth is um, really like the first experience that a human comes into the world with. And a very large majority of babies are coming into the world experiencing trauma in the way that they, in like the environment and the setting that they're in. Um, a lot of a lot of births at hospitals, even if they have like really conscious care providers, they have bright lights and loud sounds and there's tons of people in the room. And like for a very sensitive being experiencing their first breath and their first sight, it's just very overwhelming. Um, and so, yeah, we are building um, homes that are uh, specifically oriented to be like a really calming, relaxing environment. For babies to come into the world um, and we are I'm actually literally in a postpartum doula training right now um, <clears throat> but we are working with a number of midwives and doulas and other birth supporters in our area um, to create educational resources and programs for the local community and we want to like live stream them online and offer like free education um, and just, yeah, spread the word about gentle birthing. So that is Teva Natural Birth Sanctuary. And that's it. Does anyone have questions for me? Hmm. Well, I can see that you... Sorry to grill you, but I can... I... <laughs> I can see on your um, natural birth one, uh, it looks like you, first of all, you've done a lot of things. 
um, in the past three years. Like, wow. Um, and then I can see that you've got a lot of things that you'd like to use the funds for. And I'm wondering how pertinent all of these are actually to the mission that you just spoke about. So things like greenhouses, driveway, security gates, you know, shipping container, casita. How does this all relate into, into what you were just talking about there? I don't know. Sorry, I think it broke up for a second. Um, yeah, well, uh, one thing that we learned is that the number one thing that's most important for a pregnant woman and a birthing woman and a postpartum nesting woman to feel is really safe and secure. And so we felt that it was important that we create like gates and that we are putting, setting the birthing casitas like a bit farther out onto the property. And we need to make them really accessible so that if they needed to get to a hospital or something, um, it's easy for us to do that and help to transport. Um, and then as far as like the greenhouses go, so part of the postpartum uh, programs that we're creating are actually uh, growing organic food and, and meeting all of like the culinary needs of the woman or the couple um, when they're in the postpartum time. So it's like next to impossible to clean a house and cook food and like do all of these other uh, very like root chakra needs while having a brand new baby and like healing from childbirth. Um, so we want to grow herbal medicines and we want to grow organic food on the land and be able to cook and prepare um, meals for them. And something that I haven't like written on here, I might make it like a separate project, but um, oh my gosh, there's so many new mothers in this area that are struggling with this same issue. And so I really want to do something beyond it just being at Teva, but creating some program where we're able to deliver meals to like families that are in the region, not just like the couple of families that mm -hmm. are here. We're All still right. figuring that out though. Cool. Well, let's, we'll focus on what you got here and see, uh, see that. Sorry. There's a really loud bird. Um, go ahead, Lauren. I have a question, um, not about this project, but really about Free the Food. I mean, I also, I mean, I know Arara and Devin as well. And I mean, Devin's not in Costa Rica anymore and hasn't been for like the greater part of a year. Then Ada hurt his knee. And then I don't think they've really been doing much on this project. They haven't updated it since like March. And I mean, it's a verified project. It's like right at the top of the front page. And I feel like they get like a lot of just like general traffic because of that. But I mean being here I, I don't know if you know that like actually a lot of stuff is happening and maybe I just don't know but I feel like not a lot has been happening on this project and I, th I feel like it's like you know it hasn't been updated since March and like also like we're funneling a lot of our funds into Costa Rica and I kind of feel like it would be nice to diversify a little bit more and then I, I don't know but yeah and I, and I feel like this project just like isn't very active so I don't know Forrest if you have something to say to that yeah, I know Ara a few months ago healed his knee and he's been working a lot with forest, like bosque forest on the land. So I know he's he's working again, um, but obviously in the last couple of months, I also uh, was on maternity leave. So I haven't been as like dialed in, but I can send him a message and see what the, the latest is. I think that he's pretty actively working on that and the gray water systems and... Um, and uh, whatever the other project is. Water system and the separate project for the resource center. And I just like, ah, yeah, how much funds do we need to really give to Diamante Luz? Like, I love them, but like, it shouldn't be like where we send all of our donations all the time. Yeah. Yeah. See, I know Danny's not here to advocate, but I also see that the resource center is one of the projects that she added um, as well. So that would be like two projects on here that Otto is running. I do know that like during the rainy season, they kind of slow down with the planting. So that might be some reason why there hasn't been much activity on it lately. And as they get into dry season, it picks up a little bit more. But yeah, I think it's good to look at um, those things. One thing I just want to clarify is that the, it's not it's not for Diamante Luz. It's for the whole community that lives in the area. So it's the, the valley, not but just this 
it's closed like, community. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I think Devin's probably one managing the funds and he's been in Mexico for like a year, not doing anything with free the food, not building on the sidewalks, not planting for the community as this project says, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, you know, I can chime in. I can chime in on this. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been talking to Devin. He's actually not in Mexico. He's back in the States right now. Oh. Um, and I, Metagame also donated to Free the Food. We had voted on them a while back and gave them some funds. Uh, he said they are revamping the project. Last I talked to him in the last week or so. Uh, I haven't seen any updates on there either because we were looking at it to make sure that it was still active when we sent donations to. But he did speak about... Um, like getting going on it or shifting shifting how it's working. So uh, I sent him a message to see if he could jump in right now and talk about it, but I didn't get a response. Okay. Well, you have some good points, Lauren. Um, I'd like to keep moving. Is there any last chance for questions on, on Forrest's projects? Okay. Um, cool. Ashley? Or I yeah. can go if you want. No, I can go. Okay. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom up, though. I went with TechUp. TechUp is a partnership that we've had for a while. He came into a community call once and told us about it, and we've since gotten very involved. Um, it's part of the IO Foundation. So the IO Foundation is really about protecting digital rights and standing up for um, the rights of like builders and people who are building open source technology, things like that. And TechUp is like a sub project of that and they host all their events. So they're the ones where we will be hosting our Meet the Makers event on their air meet platform they've helped me so much behind the scenes to get us like onboarded there they have a 24-hour uh essentially like ethereum conference online that's going for this whole year it will help to strengthen our partnership with them as well as um as make their allow them to make the space better which also benefits us and I put a link there to the IO Foundation too in the thing, so you could, if you guys wanted to look, you can check that out. And then going up, I picked Grace Aid. Like Grace Aid is a really awesome project. They've been doing a lot um, all the way since 2015. They support refugees and migrants in a few different countries with clothes and food. Um, they've been on Give It since before Trace went live, like way back. They've been on Give It Trace and always like helping to promote us whenever they can. So I feel like us kind of helping them as well as like all the people that they're helping um, just show some appreciation for being with us this long and sticking it out and testing all these new things and getting their projects up in different places, making it traceable, going through all this stuff and really helping us define our user flow. And last, I picked uh, the Common Stack Community Fund because I really wanted to see kind of like our donations like fractal out, you know, like Rainbow Rolls gave this to us, and now we're choosing projects to like separate it out into like divvy it out into different projects. And if Common Stack Community Fund was one of those projects, they would then choose more projects to divvy it out to, and it kind of like fractals out. Also, Common Stack and Giveth have been partners for a really long time, <laughs> and pretty much are the same thing. So I think that being active there and strengthening that partnership. We get a lot of Giveth projects on their community fund conviction voting, so I thought it would be cool to have their project on our kind of same system that we're doing here. And that's that. Great. Any questions? Uh, we'll leave a couple minutes for that. Griff? What do you, what do you think we should do? Because Giveth is on the Common Stack Community Fund. Should Giveth get... I would, what I would do is I would disperse this to the projects that won in the last round, not the next round, because I'm going to close this thing. Honestly, it's too much work. I don't get all oh, my videos now. Uh, here I am making faces to all your guys' stuff, and I'm not. And anyway, I'm not, com I don't get to communicate. Any, uh, so should I not? distribute this portion of the funds to Giveth, or would I give the portion of the funds back to Giveth? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think it, sh- it would be silly for it to come back to Giveth. Okay, cool. So then I would just block out Giveth from this round. And that that's all I need to know. Thank you. Also, I actually haven't distributed funds for the last two rounds of this because there were lots of technical issues. Gitcoin stopped giving us how much money each group got, and it took me a long time to get the information from them. I still don't have, like, they keep giving me bad info. Um, Could I distribute it across the previous three rounds as well? Yeah, I mean, I think once it goes into the community fund, it's up to comments that community to kind of choose how they would want to use it. So whether it's this round, last round, the next round, the last three rounds, I think that's fine as long as like it's not being coming back to give it. I think that would be just silly. Okay. Yeah, because the previous two rounds, the reason I haven't made it a priority is because we raised like eight grand in one round and 10 grand in the other. And so it's like, oh, divided by 15. It's like, pfft, you know, so. Um, I, but if this came through, it would be a huge bump. So I would, that would be exciting. Any other questions? I think all these projects are great. Can I, can I ask a kind of on, on topic question? Go ahead, Tony. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Metagame has a doing good fund. We have a bunch of seeds set aside in it. We recently transferred our liquidity from mainnet to Polygon. Uh, unfortunately, right now, Giveth isn't working on the Polygon network. We would like to donate to projects with our seed directly. I know you accept seed right now on mainnet. Is there anything in the pipeline to put Polygon on the thing? Or is there? do you know of a good route for us to get it on the XDAI? We don't have any liquidity on XDAI, though. Bridget. Um, there's yeah, yeah. About polygon integration and the giveth form Tommy you could I don't really know everything it says but you could check it out and leave your comments and support there I was I was so disappointed with that post he's like let's do let's use give farming rewards to incentivize give pools on polygon but nothing about getting polygon actually I actually wrote kind of a strict message like mm. I was so disappointed uh-huh. Like, why would we farm on Polygon if we're not using it? How about step one, we use Polygon, and step two? Okay. Let's get back on topic. Um, yeah, I would say go on, go on the forum, Tommy. There's already a post about Polygon integration. If you're looking to bridge funds from Polygon to XDAI, you can always use Xpollinate, um, which works well for L2 chains and side chains. Um, but I'm going to leave it there and uh, go back to the issue at hand. Um, just final questions on these three projects from Ashley, and then we can move on to mine. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, I've got three here, um, and we'll start at the top. Um, Lauren briefly mentioned this one. And so this is another one from our friend Ada. So just Ada, not Ada and Devin. Um, and so he's been working hard um, to make this uh, recycling center in San Salvador. And where we all live, there's no municipal collect, there's nothing. So it's like, you know, deal with your own shit. And um, which can be really a struggle to find a way to reuse this stuff. And so Ada has been working hard to make this a reality in the local community, finding what works, what doesn't work and uh really just bringing this out and like potentially forking it into other communities in in the area and so this is really important to me and i think it's relevant to a lot of people in this call um finding out uh responsible ways to deal with their trash and so i know that he's been working hard on it i know that it's active you know um and uh i have confidence that ada is going to do a really good job with this project and so i want to support him with funds um the next thing i have here is the community currency grassroots and so i actually wrote about them um a while ago and i believe this is in kenya and they're experimenting by creating their own community currency and so um finding a way to like exchange value and like goods and services within the 
within this local community and eventually bridging it out into other communities in Kenya. And so I think this is kind of really like the cutting edge of where crypto and blockchain has a huge potential is in these communities where like their their local currencies aren't stable or they aren't effective or it's really awkward to try and like exchange value for goods. And so I think um, giving funding to projects like this will have a chance to really um, revolutionize third world countries and how they do business. And I think grassroots economics is one of the big players in this um, community currency arena. After that, um, Njambe Innovation Academy. Again, I wrote about this one as well. And uh, this is from Metodo, who has another project in Njambe as well. And so basically, he took like a model that was happening um, in, where was it, Senegal, I think? At Tan, oh, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, so basically how they're like uh, getting people from local communities and inviting them to the join this like basically incubation program for innovators and entrepreneurs. And so giving them the skills to learn how to like make their own business, cultivate their ideas, like have something that's sustainable and then giving them tools and resources and launching them out into the world. So like into their into their country, into their community and setting up successful businesses. And so basically they're taking a part of the people who graduate from the program and getting them to teach the next batch of students. And so this is all happening locally in Africa right now. And they're using a model that's already been proven to be successful, which is the Sina model. And I'm trying to remember where this was based in the original one. Ah, uh, Uganda. Yeah. And so it looks really cool. And it looks like the model's already been working. And Matoro, like, he's been really super active on Giveth. And, like, he has all these great projects. And he's been active in different arenas in the, in the DAO space. And so I'm really excited to see the stuff that he's working on. And I think this is a great way to um, support entrepreneurship in Africa. And that's the three projects I have. And I'll open it up for some questions. Any questions, but I just wanted to comment, like, if we were, if we had to choose between, like, Free the Food and the Resource Center, the two projects that are owned by the same person, like, I would advocate for the Resource Center, like, I see what they're doing, and I know he's been putting a lot of work into that. And then the other comment that I wanted to make was about the community currency one, is I think it's really cool because... It's kind of like where Giveth wants to go by giving all these projects microeconomies. And so these guys are like experimenting with what a, what a microeconomy might look like once we give it to the project. Like once the project has those microeconomies, what are the possibilities of the things that they can do with their tokens that they're, that they're given from the bonding curve? Those are my two comments. Yeah, I like all those projects, Mitch. Great choices. Same. And I actually was talking with Will today, and he gave me contact of someone who could help us onboard projects in Kenya. So that would be cool. I really, Side note. I really like grassroots economics. They're, they're so sweet. And he was so excited when we launched the Give Economy, and they were getting all these donations. He's like, wow. So I think, like, I love supporting projects who love Giveth, too. You know, like projects that are just like genuine, like you guys are doing great work. I think like grassroots economics is a good one like that. And same with same with the the man, don't don't be innovation academy. He's always also supporting give on Twitter, resharing like really helpful. Cool. Thanks. Um, any other questions for these projects? Um, so the next steps here, this is going to be open until, um, end of day Friday. So, I mean, whenever you have time, go in, you know, process everything that we just talked about. And if you want to adjust your percentages, go ahead. And then, um, we'll be closing this and then, um, we'll start working on distribution after that. Um, I, I did record this call, but I missed the very beginning of Griff talking I think I missed the Gitcoin and Center for Effective Philanthropy. 
I think I got you on mutual aid and defense. I don't know if you want to, like, would it be worthwhile for me to upload this video and then like share it in case anyone wants to watch it? You think like no one's going to watch it anyway and it's not worthwhile. I mean, maybe Danny or Fershell might watch it, but you know, that would be really just for, for their benefit. So maybe I just don't. I don't know. What do you guys think? Because either I don't or maybe Griff can shell his projects quickly and then I will because I just feel bad that we miss them. I miss them. I think you're it has... Mute, Griff. You're muted, Griff. You guys could all leave and I could just shell for Lauren. Yeah, exactly. I like that idea. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um... Well, listen, do what you, but I think, I think it's going to have very limited, uh, ah, you know what? Let's record it. You're right. Transparency. All right. Transparency. All right. Yeah. So okay. get out of here. So Griff can show his last projects. <laughs> or if you guys want to hear me show again, you can, but I mean, can I you, might walk away, but please go ahead and show. Can you just repeat one more time before that? Um, what, when this is closing? I'm going to close the end of day Friday. So tomorrow. Friday. Okay, cool. Thanks. You know, like late afternoon or something, you know. And then Sounds after good. that, we'll look into distribution based on the agreed percentages. Cool. Cool. Um, so, man, it's really too bad the team project and Tawala and uh bloom network aren't getting shilled but that's okay they're they're good they're, they're good projects and you can definitely look them up uh especially i really liked uh, i i like i liked all three of them when i looked them up i can't i couldn't shill them with with uh any kind of uh, insight though but the ones i can shill for for sure are gitcoin grand smashing pool i am putting most of my funds to this one because i really think it helps give it in so many ways as well as helps give back like kind of like what ashley said to the common stack community fund or disperses to a lot of projects this is going to go to hundreds if not thousands of projects that uh are you know developing open source tools uh in the crypto space and beyond and so i really want to support uh gitcoin especially since we got so much funding from gitcoin and are such good partners with them i would love to see giveth's symbol as a as a as part of the funding funding team you know uh there that would be so nice as well as like the lego blocks thing where by f funding gitcoin grants uh funds quadratic funding which pulls more donations in the space and also gets give backs if you're going to support gitcoin if you're going to be part of the funding league on gitcoin you should do it through give us so you get give backs and then it's like funding legos and i feel like it's a huge opportunity um to like bring awareness to the donation space in crypto uh the other one that i supported uh is center for effective philanthropy i think this is the only at least that i saw the only giving block project up there which really made me sad, honestly, because there's so many good giving block projects. So if nothing else, just support it for that. Uh, but also it's a cool meta project. They help um, non good nonprofits become more data centered and like give them supporting resources so that they can have more impact. And so they're kind of like a, a support project for all other projects and um, helping, helping nonprofits be a little bit more technical, which I think we all know they need. So uh, it's a really cool project. And you got my mutual aid and civil defense one, right? Okay, I'll also just show the mutual aid and civil defense. I met this guy in Denver. I think he idealizes the, the dream of Giveth that we can actually support just good people to do good work. And uh, he is out there on the streets. Like I swear every day he was working to uh, help the homeless in Denver. It's a huge homelessness issue and um, helping them deal with the police and, and getting out of jail and help them, you know, set up protests. He also employs them, like all the Give Us shirts that we gave away in Denver were printed by him. Uh, and, uh, and he paid, our money went to pay homeless people to print these shirts so we could hand them out to people. It was awesome. And uh, just everything that he does is in support of the greater community in Denver. And so I think it's uh, a good one, a great one to support. That's it. Thanks, Griff, for the reshare, reshill. And thanks, Mitch, for leading the call. Yeah. Yeah, if we're good, we can wrap this one up and everyone can have a quick uh, 
15 before uh dive back into more meeting mania <laughs> more yeah, thanks man. okay well, thanks everyone for joining thank you yeah thanks for hosting more meetings what are you talking about i thought we were playing games oh man i wish there's a sprint retrospect and then another community call what about memes man we we skip our meme call every week it's really sad Who's, oh man. anyway i won't bring it up we're getting some more com- communications team people and we're getting some more people on the crew and so maybe it's time to like liven it back up and get some new faces in there making memes i think it just got to be redundant every week so i think now that we've gotten some more community members we can herd some people to make some memes Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Bye.